tell me a story about a time that the school faced a challenge or, or someone faced a challenge and the school was better after having faced this challenge. I can think of some edgier JC cases that have happened from newer students and we've all benefited from having these conversations. So a student might come in with edgier language or bullying tendencies or things like that. And our community definitely quickly comes to the forefront as far as advocacy for LGBTQ students, as far as advocacy for racial differences amongst students. We really do come together as a community in those regards and become better from that, whether they be um, talking out why the behavior was problematic in the first place, to how it affected students, to the possible negative outcomes it can have. And all of these things are a real reflection upon our community and the values that we hold. So I can think of like, we've had edgier teens come in and sort of use this edgier language and it quickly is written up by students, which is something that is proving that a system works first off by students that are new and old engaging in the JC system enough to write something up enough for us to talk about it. The cases are attended by not only the team, but members of the community from all of the different rooms in the school coming to the one room wanting to discuss the matter. If it gets escalated to school meeting, they then all come together and want to talk about whatever the topic was and how it could be harmful if it's not changed. So I see things like that happen, not frequently, but sometimes in our community as far as behaviors that are challenging from new students, just brand new students. And some end up lasting in our community and some end up not making it in our community. So those are times where I feel like our community is the strongest, is all coming together really talking about topics that are typically taboo or challenging in other schools. Um, adults might be very quick in other schools too to come in and absolve the problems and sort of sweep it under the rug and sweep it away. And I think that really is at a detriment to a lot of these kids for understanding topics that might be a little edgier, which is really what life is about, is how to handle things that we might not be equipped to handle. And it really is a beautiful thing to be able to hear and see some of these students talking about some of these things. And the things range from mental health to physical health to the way that one expresses oneself. So it really is cool to see kids advocating for other kids and their rights. And I think it makes us stronger as a community. Even though they're rare events, they're formative in the sense both for individuals and kids getting feedback about their behavior um, and giving feedback about others' behavior and 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 sort of having that conversation. It's something that, that is afforded in this type of democratic environment that is, is overshadowed in environments that are structured so differently, you know, structured around academic delivery instead of around the agency of the kids themselves. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.